We're with Jay Colligan, one of the three seniors on the Eastern Connecticut men's basketball team. Eastern getting ready to open up its season. They're going to be opening up um, on November 15th. They're going to be at the WPI Invitational taking on nationally ranked Nichols College. Uh, Jake, last year, third year at Eastern, fourth year college player, um, young team. Talk about how the preseason has gone. Uh, preseason started off slow for us. Um, we got a bunch of new pieces, uh, a couple of transfers. We got a freshman, Rakish Tibby, uh, transfer Sean Gashi, Sean, uh, transfer Matt Rohelia. Um, and it, it started slow, like it should, you know. Um, October 15th to November 15th is a, is a tough time. Guys learning the new system and uh, battling some injuries with Jake McCarthy. Um, it's our 6A big man. We, we want him back in the lineup. Um, and yeah, we uh, battled some injuries and we'll be all right though. Did this year's um, preseason have a different feel to it? Because your previous two years at Eastern, you came into some very veteran teams. Yeah, um, we, uh, like I said, it's, we're starting slow right now. And in the previous years, uh, with Tarchi Brown, my sophomore year, uh, there was a bunch of, bunch of core guys, veteran mm -hmm. guys that knew their role. And uh, even last year with Carlos being there. Um, Gonzalez. Gonz yeah. Yeah, yeah, Carlos Gonzalez being there. Uh, Leo Hyatt, Jay Nunez, Donnie exactly Craig. Exactly right, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it, it's a slow transitioning process for us right now. Um, but me and Corey Muckle, we're, uh, we're trying to gather the troops together right now and bring us together. Well, I mean, Honestly, you and, this is basically you and Corey's team. You guys by far have the most experience coming into this season. Are you guys looking at it that way, that you've got to really take the reins on this team? Yeah, we got we got it under control right now. We understand that there's a lot at stake for us. Um, we got to lead together, me and him as a group, and uh, collectively as a group. Everyone everyone has to chip in, you know. It's, it's not about me and Corey at the end of the day. Um, but we're going to be there. We're going to play hard every night. Uh, Seth Thomas. He was a freshman last year, going into his sophomore year. He's going to help us a lot, um, and we're looking forward to that. Do you think there was more uh, teaching going on this year preseason because of the new people? Yeah, we had to go over stuff a lot. We're still going over some basic stuff that we would probably be a little farther in in the previous years. Um, we, um, Coach Geithner has to, has to teach and, and really put his time into what we're doing right now because um, we're, we're very offense oriented with our sets and, and whatnot. And um, and guys are still learning, and that's all right. It's a month into the season. Um, we'll, be, we'll be good in a couple, couple more weeks. We'll be all right. Do you think, and I don't want to be overly critical, but do you think, I know earlier in Coach Geithner's career, they really, really, really pushed defense. And, and it, it just seems like, even though we're scoring a lot of points, it seems like maybe we're getting away from that a little bit. Do you notice that or no? Um. I think that's where the game is going okay, as a whole. Good. I think that's where just the overall basketball yeah. around the world. Yeah, um, it's yeah just right. Everyone in, everyone's just offense. All these guys just so creative in their offensive games. And it's and all these younger guys are looking at that, looking at Steph mm -hmm. Curry step over half court and shoot it. Mm -hmm. Kyrie Irving dribbling through five guys, spinning around somebody. But um, but no, we, we go into practice every day and we and – we, stress defense like that's our that's our main thing we gotta that's what wins games like it's the old school little little thing there it defense does. wins games and uh and we're, we're gonna live and die by defense we're gonna we're gonna play hard every night and we gotta guard you know that's that's what our, that's our go-to you want to you'll end up being one of the top three point shooters in the history of the program but i noticed the last year or so that you're in your uh your game driving to the basket and ball handling has improved a lot. Uh, that's what I worked on a little bit this summer, or a lot, I should say. Yeah. Um, just, just knowing when I heard that Carlos Gonzalez was out, um, it kind of he we talked a little bit and uh, and it kind of just set a little mindset, a little trigger in me that I gotta go and uh, and I just wanted to expand my game. I don't want to live and die by the three. I've been doing it for two years now. Um, but that's that's been our motto, so I, I'm I'm not complaining or I don't hate it. But um, but yeah, I want to expand my game and and just I want to be difficult to guard. Uh, come game time, I don't want to be easy to guard. Um, coming off a screen, I want I want guys to think I'm going to the rim too, not just 
settling for a three. What, what can be, personally, what could be goals for this year? I mean, you've won conference tournaments, you've been the preseason number one, you're closing in on 1,000 points. Is there anything that you really would like to achieve before you graduate? Um, I just I just think that the LEC is important for us. Um, I've lost two since I've been in college now. Yeah. When I was at Keene, we lost a thriller Eastern, game here yeah. to Eastern. Um, then I happened to come to Eastern a year later, won a, won a LEC with Tarshi Brown in that group. Um, and then last year, I mean, everybody knows what happened last year. Ty Nichols kind of did his thing and took over us last year. And uh, I think one more. I need one more under the belt for my – for personally, that's, that's what we want right now. And getting into the NCAA tournament, um, just – I've been to the NCAA tournament twice, which is fun, and it's great. And um, and it's just it's just when you win or lose, you know what I'm saying? It's just you win, you win, you keep going. And just take that game by game. And uh, I think just winning this year that's that's probably my biggest personal goal. All the other accolades they'll come. Well, talk about your your freshman year. You were at Keene. You came to Eastern. You lost uh, to Eastern in a great great final. Then you guys rebound and you win three NCAA tournaments and go to the Elite Eight as an at-large selection, right? Yeah. Talk about that experience as a freshman. That that was that was one of the most humbling experiences I would say going going through my college career, losing here at Eastern as a Connecticut kid. Knew a lot of people here, um, and then we all sat in a room and we we saw that we were playing Amherst number. They might have been number five, I think, at the time, and. Uh, we just went into practice. I remember it like it was yesterday. We went into practice and we just worked hard. And we just we had another shot to to play, and that's what. And it was for the seniors, you know. Those guys uh, brought a good group to Keene. They uh, they really built a foundation at Keene, I believe, with Lucas Hamill, Jeff Lund, um, and Matt Ozella. They uh, they really uh, put a good core together, and they they, they made they made Keene a, a better place. I feel like as a, as a basketball program. And uh, going to the Elite Eight, it was just, we beat Amherst. Ty Nichols hit a game winner versus Amherst. Um, his favorite left ball in the left hand, pull up three. He hit it, game winner, that was that. Then we played number two, Ramapo. Or they might have been number six. Ramapo was good, though. They, were, they, they hosted the tournament. And, um, and I hit a shot with probably 25 seconds left, a deep three and to put us up, and that was the last bucket of the game. And uh, we go on to beat Ramapo. And then we go, we're going to Babson to, uh, for the Sweet 16, and uh, we beat Christopher Newport, who Keene had lost to before I went to Keene in the Sweet 16. They, got to, they went to the Sweet 16 twice, back-to-back um, -back years, and they lost to Christopher Newport. And then uh, they got their revenge. We got out of the re revenge. And, um, we go on to play Babson, and Babson was good. They had a kid Joey Flannery. Oh yeah, um, big D D three guy, one of the, one of the top D three guys around, and uh, they were tough. They ended up going winning it that year. Babson. Babson did. Yeah. yeah, they won the they won it all that year, and they were tough. But that experience was great. I would love to do that here. You know, um, thought we had a little opportunity my sophomore year to do uh do some special things, but uh, there's things happen and. There's good teams all around, and you just got to bring your A game every time you go out to play in the NCAA tournament and, and hope for the best. Well, the year you went to the Elite Eight with Keene, some, when you guys lost to Eastern, was it a foregone conclusion that you would get in at large? No. Uh, yeah, so sometimes it's like, thank God we got in at large, and now we can really go to work. Yeah, um, it, pro it wasn't even expected. Wow. Um, I think... Uh, I don't did, I, I don't even remember how many games we won, but I just think that you won three in the NCAA, right? Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. three in the NCAA. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. The overall, overall yeah. um, it might have been twenty, um, but yeah, uh, it was it was kind of like it was like a like a magic story, like a, a crazy story that all right, Keen let let Keen in and they'll be out. They let let them get Amherst, you know, let them play Amherst first. Um, and uh, and see what happens. You know, we were never expected to go to the Elite Eight. Um, and and Eastern lost in the round of 32 that year. Yeah. Um, 
And w- once we beat, got through that first round, I think that's the biggest, the biggest thing in college basketball. Um, it is. D3. Uh, getting through that first round of the NCAA tournament. It's just like, it's like, all right, we got another week to play. You know what I'm saying? Another week to practice. Yeah, absolutely. And that just gives a little more, like, a little more confidence in the whole group. Like, all right, we're still standing with the next 32 teams. Next, or the next 16 teams. Right. You know? And then you get, you go to the, you go to the next weekend, and it's just it's nice. You play the weekend. You go practice hard for a week, and you're traveling to, uh, to wherever you're going, you know. And you got two games, not guaranteed, but Friday night you play, and then uh, you went out, and you got you're in the Elite Eight. And before you, you say you went out that weekend, you're in the Final Four in Salem, and and that's great, you know. It, it's just an opportunity that that I I would love to get back. It's a great experience. Yeah. You, you might be the only person in the history of the Little East that has been teammates of Ty Nichols, of Keene, and Tarty Brown. <laughs> uh, two of the may go down as maybe the two best players in the history of the, of the Little East or close to it. Yeah. Talk about both of their physical skills and, and how talented they both were and how they were as teammates. I'll start with my guy, Ty. Um, Ty was just a different type of talent. Um, just his speed, his first dribble. His, or his first step off his just boom. Tie, he was just, you, it was hard to guard him. Coming off a ball screen, it's almost impossible to pinpoint where he's going. He's very shifty. Um, getting to the rim, it's, it's easy for him. Um, he might have been, both of them, Tarchi and Ty, they might have been A-10 guards, Division One guards in the A-10. Or, I, they, really? They were up there. They, were definitely, they definitely had some, some big time skill. Um, but yeah, Ty was great. Ty, Ty worked on his game since he was a freshman. I know that um, he really uh, set the bar for himself and, and became a player. And um, and Tarchi, T- Tarchi was Tarchi. Everybody knows that he was gonna go out there and he was gonna do it every single night. Do what he had to do. Rebound. He'll, he'll look for the open pass or the open man, um, and he'll go score if we need a bucket. You know, he. Uh, and it, it was unselfish. That was the best part about Tarchi. He was, was one of the most unselfish guys when he didn't have to be. Um, and, yeah, he it was, it, it was strong. He could, he could – Very strong. Very strong. Bring him out on the three-point line, he'll shoot the three. He'll shoot the mid-range or he'll bring you in the post and just and play bully ball. So, um, so yeah, they – both guys, like you said, top, top LEC guys around in quite a long time, I would say. Well, you guys – you're going. You're you're getting ready to play Nichols uh, in the opener. Twenty-eight Nichols, twenty-eight and three, ranked. Uh, made it to the Elite Eight last year. Um, you guys are the preseason favorite to win the Little East again. You and Keen, Keen, one point behind you in the poll. Both of you get four first place votes. Yeah. Um, are you guys ready for the season? Uh, definitely. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say we're not ready. We've been working every game or every practice. You know, we come in every day and we, we're looking to get better. We want to get better. Um, and it's just a challenge for us. Nichols, what, number 10 in the country right now um, for the preseason votes. But like you said, what preseason votes are, are preseason votes. We, we're not looking at us being finishing one in the conference. Um, we're not worried about that right now. But, um, but just a, another challenge, you know, when – we're all up for challenges. We want the competition. We want to play the best teams. And, uh, and um, yeah, I mean, Nichols lost their best player, Marcos. I can't even say his last name last year. Oh, yeah. Um, he, was, he was tough. And, uh, but they got another guard, Deontay Bruton. Um, he's a lefty, shifty guard. And then they got two 6'8 monsters down there. But, but like I said, any challenge we're up for. And uh, we're ready to go. Okay, so Eastern is going to be ready to go. They're going to be opening up on, um, uh, they're going to be playing, as we said, Nichols College. That's going to be at the WPI Invitational. And then in the second round on uh, November 16th, Eastern is going to take on either New England College or WPI. WPI ranked 16th in the country, and uh, New England College was 22-4 and a year ago. Uh, Jake, best of luck this year. Thanks for being here. Thank you.